We're here looking at sand dunes today and as you can see in front of me we've got a vast expand of sand. This is low tide so the prevailing wind is coming directly in front of me and that's blowing a lot of this sand towards the shore. So for a sand dune we need a wide beach to pro provide a big supply of sand. We also need a strong wind so the prevailing wind is coming from directly in front of me. We can see here the high tide mark is in front of me. You can see all of the rubbish, the seaweed and so on in it. And slightly above it we've got the beginnings of embryo dunes. And in embryo dunes we have pioneer species that you can see. These are very specialised to live in these conditions because it's very difficult for them to live here. You've got to think about the wind blowing the sand away. We've got to think about the salt that makes it difficult for plants to grow. The pH will be very alkaline. On hot days that sand will get very very hot indeed and also we've got to think about the permeability of that soil that when you pour water when it rains that uh, soil will lose its moisture very quickly. So the embryo dunes are forming above the high tide mark maybe uh, where storm tides might reach. So we can see here there's a, a beer can and uh, it could be a stick, it could be a piece of litter, some seaweed that acts as a trap for uh, the sand. So the sand will accumulate around that and eventually these pioneer species start to grow. As they grow their root systems will hold that sand together, meaning that it's a bigger barrier to the wind trapping further sand. So you can probably see it here that we've started to get a distinct embryo dune with a steeper side here and a shallower side uh, on the, the back side of it or the leeward side away from the wind. And as we head inland we start to see bigger dunes and a bit more vegetation. So we're moving up now into the four dunes where this species called marum grass really starts to dominate and it's got a mesh like root system that really stabilizes and holds the soil together. So what we previously saw were called embryo dunes. The next stage you can see is much bigger. This is called the four dune and we get a lot more vegetation. Still it's pioneer species but what that vegetation does is it stabilizes the soil and you can see the root structure here is much like a mesh. So that prevents the sand getting blown away easily so that that sand dune can grow much bigger. So we're standing here on a yellow dune. You can see this is much bigger than the four dune we previously saw. Yellow it's easy to remember because the sand is yellow. There's still very little organic content here. But you can see much more of the dune is covered in vegetation because the conditions are more favourable and there's a much greater biodiversity. Much fewer of the uh, pioneer species because like I said the conditions have changed. They've become much less harsh inland. We're now in the grey dunes. You can start to see there's a bit more biodiversity. If we look at the floor below us there's all sorts of mosses, grasses, uh, there's lichen here as well. Uh, and the soil colour is starting to change a bit from that yellow sand colour because it's mixing with more uh, organic content or if we want to use a more specific term, a better keyword, that would be humus. So we're getting this grey soil type. So it gets the name grey dune because of the colour of the soil and also because of those lichens. So as there's more of the floor covered in uh, plants, we've got that stabilizing effect on of their root systems on the soil so therefore these soils are becoming to be more fixed they're less mobile because the sand simply can't blow the sand that makes up these dunes as easily so if we think about why plants can grow here more easily there's a higher biodiversity because we're starting to get more fertility in the soil and also the soils gaining organic content so therefore it can hold more water, it's becoming less permeable and therefore more species of plants can live here. So the final stage are mature dunes. So these are very much more fixed 
Uh, we're starting to see a greater biodiversity of plants, more so than the grey dunes. We're starting to see shrubs and trees. And what eventually happens if we continued inland, we would see what's called the climax community. This means that process of succession of species that overtake others because they become more specialized to those conditions uh, changes until it eventually can no longer happen as we've got the dominant ecosystem suited for that environment. And here in the UK, a good sign of that is this young tree in front of us, which is an oak tree. So much of the UK should be covered in deciduous woodland, dominated by this species in front of us. How to draw a sand dune. So the first step is we need a wide beach. That beach is going to be providing the sand for the sand dunes. So we'll start off with the embryo dune. We, we could add in there pioneer species, the first species to grow. So these are the hardiest of the species and that tends to happen just above the high tide mark. We also need to add in the prevailing wind. The prevailing wind is blowing that sand from the wide beach inland to make the dunes. Following that we've got the four dunes, so we're going slightly bigger. Again, a bit bigger. That's the yellow dune. Again, bigger the grey dune. Until finally we have the mature dune. So let's start labelling these. We need, after embryo dune, we have got the four dune, followed by the yellow dune, the grey dune, and the mature dune. We could also add in what's called a dune slack. This is an area where the water table is higher than the land, so we get aquatic plants. It could be reeds and bulrushes, those kind of plants in there. We can start to add some kind of just representations of the types of plants we get. So these pioneer species, we've got grasses, particularly marum grass dominating, maybe a few others. We start to get some shrubs. We're generally just trying to show that idea of a greater biodiversity until a mature dune has got all sorts of plants but it's easiest to show the mature dune with trees because we have reached what's called climax community where succession cannot take place anymore. And to really up the level of this diagram to a much higher level getting those higher marks, we can add in some arrows. So we can add in age, because as you head inland, the age of the dunes increases. Humus, the organic content in the soil, it's gonna go from that yellow to gray to the brown that we think of when we think of soil. We can add in biodiversity, the number of species. We're gonna be focusing on vegetation, but whether it's vegetation, invertebrates, mammals, reptiles, whatever it is, that should generally increase as we head inland, and also that process of succession. Going the other way, as you head closer to the sea, permeability increases. So if we pour water on sand, obviously the water will flow through very, very easily. The salinity will also increase because it's much saltier near the sea and finally the pH will be higher. Soils generally are slightly acidic, salt is alkali, so as we're heading we're going from an alkali to a very slightly acidic soil.